Samsara is created when we let our mind extrovert through the five senses. We focus on an object through our eyes, or through the ears, or the nose, and make thoughts and emotions about this object. It may seem like we have different consciousnesses through the different senses, but actually it is one mind that alternatively grabs at objects through the various senses. The traditional example of this is of a monkey in an empty room with five windows, restlessly jumping around and looking out through one window after the other. An outside observer might think that there are a lot of monkeys in that room, but in fact there is only one. If you catch hold of that monkey and tie it up, there is no jumping around anymore. In other words, the way to capture the monkey is by dissolving the thought. Another example is of a fireplace in the middle of the house with smoke coming out through all the openings. If you throw a bucket of water in the middle, the flames are extinguished and the smoke simultaneously disappears in all directions. Smoke is an example for the expression of the essence. Just as thoughts are the expression of Dharmakaya, essence body, they are not Dharmakaya itself, but they are a manifestation of our basic nature. Just like our basic nature, this manifestation has no concrete substance to it. The essential teaching is never to just recognize dualistic mind. That is what all sentient beings are doing all the time, noticing their feelings and thoughts and then acting upon them. The meditation instruction is not to perpetuate that. It is more than simply recognizing dualistic mind, dualistic thinking. Rather, it is to recognize the essence of this mind. That is the crucial difference. Being caught up in one's thoughts and acting upon these feelings is the cause of endless samsara. This is being caught up in the expression and not knowing the essence itself.
caught up in thinking, we focus on the false, the unreal. Yet the real, the indivisibility of the three kayas or bodies, is already spontaneously present as our own nature. The choice lies in simply not recognizing, which is samsara, or recognizing, which is nirvana. If you don't recognize my nature, you stray again into the three realms of samsara. Recognizing self-existing wakefulness is the very essence of nirvana. At that very moment of recognition, nothing is concealed in any way at all. Your nature is laid utterly bare. The statement that not recognizing is samsara means that the moment you link your mind up with some object of experience, the immediate reaction is one of the three poisons. Either you like something, or you don't like it, or you remain indifferent. Caught up in these three emotions, people might still claim, I create no negative karma. But how can there be any negative karma besides the three poisons? The three poisons are exactly what creates the three realms of samsara. Attachment creates the realms of desire. Aversion creates the realms of form. Indifference creates the realms of formlessness. Not recognizing one's own essence and being caught up in the three poisons perpetuates nothing other than the three realms of samsara. It is unavoidable. If you simply recognize your essence, you are immediately face to face with the three kayas. It is so simple that it's actually incredibly easy. There is no way you could miss it. The problem, in fact, is that it's too easy. 
It's too close to oneself. Some great masters have said that the fault lies in not that it is complicated, but that it is too simple. People don't trust it. They think, this is just my present state of being awake. So what use is it? It's not very special. I want something astounding, something totally different, something that is far superior to this present state of wakefulness, something with amazing lights and great splendour. And they ignore their present natural state of mind and hope that something extraordinary will happen, maybe coming down from above. They are right. This present state is not that special. But by sitting and hoping like that, they turn their backs to their innate three kayas. If you recognize your own mind, on the other hand, in the moment of seeing, there is freedom. You are liberated from any thought involvement at that time. That itself is the essence of nirvana. If, however, we ignore that fact, and chase after something else, some kind of altered state we believe to be superior to the present nature of mind, it is going to be very difficult to ever find the Buddha mind. Right now, the difference between samsara and nirvana lies in recognizing or not recognizing mind essence. That should be clear. The moment you recognize mind essence, the present thought involvement dissolves, vanishes, without leaving a trace. You are left with the intrinsic three kayas. It is not that we need to create the three kayas or achieve them. You are recognizing what is already there. On the other hand, if you are caught up in what is thought of, Samsara goes on endlessly.
in the moment of thinking, recognize the identity of that which thinks and the thought dissolves. That is so easy. Recognizing is not the problem. Anyone who is taught to recognize their own mind essence will see that it is no thing. They can identify mind essence. The problem lies in our habitual tendencies from innumerable past lives. Just because we recognize once doesn't mean that recognition stays. There is no stability there. It just slips away again. We have the bad habit or the negative pattern of always grasping towards objects. For so many lifetimes, life after life after life, as well as in the bardos between, we have been reinforcing the habit of looking away from mind essence itself. We keep recreating samsara again and again. Every time you get caught up again, the training is therefore simply to recognize and dissolve the thought. Our habit of thinking extrovertedly, focusing only on external objects, is what propels us day and night, life after life, and in the bardo state in between. We have this habit in the dream state as well. Our body runs around and does things in our dreams, even though it is not a real body, but a body created out of habitual tendencies. In dreams, we experience loss and gain, enemies and friends, and all different types of pleasure, pain, and so forth. But at the moment we wake up, where are all these entities? 
they are gone without a trace, not to be found any place at all. The dream state is created by our own thoughts. Likewise, in the waking state, these same thoughts create this whole drama of life. In the bardo state, there is no physical body, but due to habit, we still believe that we have a physical body with the five senses. Of course, there is no real body there. This physical body definitely doesn't go through the bardo. Neither does it go to the hell realms, the Buddha realms, and so on. Our present body is just a temporary dwelling place, like a hotel. The person living in this hotel right now is the mind. It's this person, rather than the body, who will experience all the different effects of various karmic actions. This body won't feel a thing, because as soon as it dies, it is gone. There is nothing there. But the mind continues in these patterns, and it will continue to experience... Still, all this experience is no more real than the dream you had last night. It is the dream-like thinking that goes on experiencing the hell realms. It is only more thinking... The bardo is also just more thinking. And when we eventually enter into a new physical body at the end of the bardo, it is more thinking again, day after day, life after life. Unless we now bring an end to this thinking by dissolving it, samsara is not going to end by itself. It will go on and on indefinitely, as it has through beginningless lifetimes until now.
all the while the essence of enlightenment, the fully awakened state, has been with us always. It has never been separate from us, even for an instant. The moment you recognize your nature, you are face to face with the three kayas. These three kayas, intrinsic to our Buddha nature, were never lost at any point whatsoever. The Buddha sees that all sentient beings are dreaming. They are dreaming the six realms. They are dreaming the four places of rebirth. They are dreaming all their joys and sorrows. When we are on the Bodhisattva stages, we are just about to wake up from the dream. Only the fully enlightened Buddha is totally awakened. Buddhas see that beings are ignorant. Sleep is only a subsidiary of ignorance. The real stupidity is not knowing our own awareness wisdom. The training is all about first recognizing this basic nature, then training in the strength of recognition. And finally, attaining complete stability. That is the only way to awaken from this dream state. We need to obliterate this deluded thinking and no material thing in this world can do that. The only way is to recognize the insubstantial identity of the thinker and experience the three kayas indivisibly. There is no other way. No drug, not even the strongest anesthesia, will totally eliminate deluded thinking. It only puts it on pause, bringing it to a temporary halt. The moment the anesthetic wears off, thinking begins again. Drugs also block the enlightened quality of original wakefulness, the wisdom qualities. Under their influence, there is no wisdom of seeing the nature as it is, and no quality of seeing all that exists.
Rather, we are totally obscured by mindlessness. To make oneself mindless and oblivious is not a solution. An anaesthetic that lasted forever would certainly wipe out all conditioned states of pleasure, pain and indifference. But there is no such drug. Every drug has only a temporary effect. Instead of bringing the mind to a halt, recognize my nature with its basic quality of unimpededness. The Tibetan word yeshe, original wakefulness, implies an absence of clinging to subject and object. Perceiver and perceived, which is not the case with normal mind. Normal mind is always structured as the duality of perceiver and perceived. Without any duality of perceiver and perceived, there is no way a normal thought can survive. It vanishes. As long as duality does not become oneness, there is no enlightenment. When recognizing, this duality is dissolved into oneness. Thank mm-hmm. you.